snap. That's what All right. you do. And then Thursday, September 6th. Oh, I forgot to start the other joke. I don't know what that happened. <coughs> Uh, let's see, the, uh, from there, any of the other things listed up there, the possible is tomorrow, pizza party is tomorrow. If you're at home and you're sick and you were still into the pizza party and you forgot your money, email me or Mrs. Randall and we can save you a spot so you'll still be good to go. Uh, the iPad is just so you can download Socrative, so if you're at home and you're watching this right now, you can pause right there. Uh, and then you can go ahead and uh, tab tab over and go to Socrative and then download this because you're going to need it for the quiz tomorrow. And this is just the pizza party to taunt kids if you're not cool enough to go. That's awful. We'll miss you so much. And then now, we're going to get into our story. Um, your homework, one, I'm really hoping we finish the story together. And then I'd really like to finish the rest of your homework, uh, which is the back side of that. We're going to do that side over there. Those of you who have the sheet, you can start filling it in as we're talking about the story. If you have a pencil, that'll probably make it easier in case you make mistakes. Uh, if you have a pen, just don't make mistakes and you'll be fine. Uh, but we'll be going through and talking about that, giving you the characters, the setting, and things like that. Once we finish the whole story, then we'll go back and sort of make sure you can do as much of it as possible. Uh, the story of the fisherman. First off, a uh, little blurry thing at the top. I'm going to read that because it plays a big role in the story where it talks about archaic pronouns. Um, our story uses what are called archaic pronouns. Thee, thou, and thy. Um, they used to be used a long time ago. By definition, that's what archaic means. It means things from a long time ago we no longer use. Uh, and they were one time used for, like teachers down or to students or from bosses down to employees. And it was used to show power over somebody in one way or another. They play a big role in our story because it helps you figure out which character has power in the story as it goes through. So here, oh, you're familiar <coughs> with the words. Most likely because there is a book many of you guys have seen. Some of you have even read many of you on a weekly basis on the weekends that uses thee, thou, and thy throughout the entire book. That book is? The Bible. Good job, kids. I'm not sure about that yet. Yeah, the one with the words that says, thou shall not kill, thee Aww. shall not smack a squirrel, whatever it is. <laughs> don't, don't remember all the different yes, sins. Um, but that's because it shows power. It's supposed to be the big guy, girl, plant, whatever you believe in, having power over you, telling you what you cannot do. Because they say, thou shall not do a thing because you're being told directions. Um, I can use it with you guys being a teacher. I can say, you know, thou needs to get out thy homework so I can come around and stamp it. If not, I'm going to beat thee with a stick. Like, Thank you, Mr. Bogart. And I'm like, you're welcome. Uh, but I moved from there. Uh, you could not use it with me because it would get you in trouble. If you're like, Mr. Broviar, what is thy tie? I can't see what thee is wearing. I'm like, oh, you sassy little chug. Uh, and so you can't use it the other way because it'd be your way of having power over me. So my recommendation, if you want to have fun, when you go home tonight and you're sitting around the dinner table, uh, use it with your parents and just be like, oh, mom, you've, thy has cooked a wonderful meal. What hast thou done? You've outdone thyself. And she be like, aw, that's so sweet. And you're like, Sweet. And you can just sit there and guy giggle maniacally and be all kinds of great. Maybe tomorrow at the pizza party when they come in, I can you're like, oh, thou has raised such a great child. Congratulations to thee. They're like, my kid used that last night. I'm like, yeah. great. All right. Now that you've been educated on how to low key insult your parents, let's get to our story of the fisherman. As we get into it, figure out uh, characters. There's only two. Uh, you can't count it as a character until it does something. Uh, or he or she or whatever does something. And then setting, hopefully you can figure that out towards the beginning also. <laughs> there was once upon a time a fisherman so old and so poor that he could scarcely manage to support his wife and three children. He went every day to fish very early in the morning. And each day he made a rule not to throw his nets more than four times. He started out one morning by moonlight and came to the seashore. He undressed and threw his nets, and as he was drawing them towards the bank, he felt a great weight. He thought he had caught a large fish, and he felt very pleased. But a moment afterwards, seeing that instead of a fish, he only had in his nets the body of an old rotted donkey, he was much disappointed. Upset with having such a bad haul, once he had mended his nets, 
which the carcass had broken in several places, he threw them a second time. In drawing them in, he again <clears throat> felt a great weight, so that he thought they were full of fish. But he only found a large basket full of rubbish. He was <clears throat> much annoyed. Oh, fortune, he cried, do not trifle thus with me, a poor fisherman who can hardly support his family. So saying, he threw away the rubbish, and after having washed his nets clean of the dirt, he threw them for the third time. But he only drew in stones, shells, and mud. He was almost in despair. Now, let's give you homework help. We'll take a quick pause. Uh, Setting-wise, where is our story taking place? Harvey? A pond. Close. It's like a pond, but a little bigger. A lake. Like a lake, but a little bigger. The ocean. Like an ocean, but a little smaller. A creek. <laughs> We're someday going to understand how bodies of water work. It's somewhere in the The seashore. The seashore. It was like an ocean. That's an ocean! <laughs> There's seas and oceans. They're different things. You go, you go into Mrs. Randall's room and you do a little... They're the same thing. They're the same thing. Let me know how that works out. So, the seashore. Now, not on the sea. It's... Oh, not that. I don't care about you. On the sea, but the seashore because of how the character goes out there and does the fishing. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, time of day. And what time of day is our story taking place, Jackson? Very early morning. So early the moon is still out. So super duper early in the morning. And then we get to our main character in the story, Malachi. And who's our main story? Char main story. Main character in the story? Oh, the fisherman. The fisherman. Now our fisherman does not fish <laughs> like with a fishing pole. He uses <coughs> something different. And Amira, what does our fisherman use? A net. He uses a net. Which is why I had to Photoshop a net onto our fisherman. Even uh, though it really, really smoked a good job on that one. And so, uh, what he would do is not like this guy whose net he has a reel on it because <laughs> Photoshop. Uh, but giant net, and you walk out there and you're like, Fucha! I think that's a fishing sound. And you throw the net out there and it lands in the water, and then you bring it back. Our fisherman is apparently oddly religious, much like the king yesterday, who was like, God will decide your fate. Uh, our fisherman is the same way. He's like, God will decide if my kid's chewing rocks because he will only fish her a number of times. And how many times will he fish her? That many. Four. Quattro fisheros. And he does not catch anything by the fourth time. His kids are out of luck and no food for them. The first time he throws his net, what does he catch? A dead donkey. Yeah. I'm not sure where you're fishing that a dead donkey is just like out there. Yes, it's not a seashell. And I did have a kid like, um, you can eat the dead donkey. Ew. Um, yeah, that same no. thing. It's if it's like a freshly dead donkey that you just stabbed yourself, yes. One that's all like bloated and floating in the water, you could eat it, but then you might not be eating anything again for a long time. Uh, it might solve that whole Forever. thing. Forever. Uh, the second thing he catches is? So, but once again, I don't know where he's fishing that has dead donkeys and piles of trash. <laughs> you probably shouldn't be eating any fish from there, but... Well, I it's guess. so rubbish, so it's probably like England. Sure. <laughs> British. The third time he throws it... Rocks and, and shells. And so, once again, nothing that's very delicious. Those of you who have mastered your eye step, uh, how many throws does he have left? One. So he has one throw left. When he threw his nets for the fourth time, sorry, sorry, then he threw his nets for the fourth time. When he thought he had a fish, he drew them in with a great deal of trouble. There was no fish, however, but he found a golden container, which, by its weight, seemed to be full of something. And he noticed that it was fastened and sealed with lead, with the impression of a king's seal smashed into the top of it. He was delighted. I will sell it to the metal foundry, he said. With the money I shall get for it, I shall buy a bushel of wheat. Stop hiccuping. <sighs> Better. Um, so the fourth time he throws it, what does he find? Oh. Kind of. A container. And so he's all excited about the container. Well, we don't know. He hasn't opened it. 
Now, uh, I have a prop I get to bring in for today's story. Uh, mine is not gold, uh, but it has Star Wars on it, which is as good as gold. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he has a little container, and that's what he ends up finding. Now, you can't eat this, no matter how good your teeth might be. Like, we're on a go. Uh, but he's still excited, because what can he do with it? Selling. And that's he's like, I can still make my fat bank. And so you can still make the fat bank by selling it to the foundry, which is where you get to sell metal things. Jackson. Why would you buy a wheat bushel when you could buy wheat seeds and then live off it forever? Because I think maybe the bushel has seeds in it. Maybe he has no place to farm because he's a fisherman. Wow. Well, 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 you well, 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 now the joy, oh, it said that it was sealed. Uh, the seal does not mean like art, art, art kind of seal. Uh, but on the top of it, it means that a king had smashed their symbol into it. This one also has a king's seal on it. Uh, you can tell the king's seal of uh, Star Wars. Uh, the best king ever. Uh, and so that's why he's excited because it's closed and he has no idea what's on the inside of it. He's like, ooh, so prizes. The seal of the seal. Watch it be like full of mud. He examined the jar on all sides. He shook it to see if it would rattle. But he heard nothing. And so, judging from the impression of the seal and the lid, he, <coughs> he thought there must be something precious inside. To find out, he took his knife, and with a little trouble, he opened it. He turned it upside down, and nothing came out which surprised him very much. He set it in front of him, and while he was looking at it attentively, such a thick smoke came out that he had to step back a pace or two. The smoke rose up to the clouds, and stretching over the sea and the shore formed a thick mist, which astonished the fishermen. When all the smoke was out of the jar, it gathered itself together and became a thick mass in which appeared a genie twice yes. as large as the largest I giant. I no. Actually, yes. Shh, he's still talking. When he saw such a terrible-looking monster, the fisherman would like to have run away, but he trembled so much with fright he could not move a step. And it's not a guess when you read ahead. So then he gets all excited because he decides you have something on the inside of it. So he takes his knife and he stabs the thing. Stabby, 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 stabby. Pops it off, turns it upside down, and what comes out? Nothing. 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 And he's like, oh, man. And he throws it down. He's like, walk, 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 walk. And it stops moving. And then what comes out? Smoke. smoke. And he's like, oh, it's a smoke grenade. And he jumps back, and then the smoke grenade becomes a magical smoke grenade. And what happens with this magical smoke grenade? A giant genie. And that's where Giant Genie shows up. And the genie pops up in front of him, which, of course, makes him excited. That is inaccurate. Hopefully, he has read all the stories that you have, because what happens with genies? Wishes. There you go. And so, yes, I'm aware the picture is not completely accurate. It's Broby art. You use your imagination. <laughs> Horrible children. It's the best I could do with the clip art I had. Burke? Where's your genie? Still coming. <laughs> Great! <clears throat> Sorry, this is right. <clears throat> Great king of the genie! <laughs> cried the monster in front of him. I will never again disobey you! At these words, the fisherman took courage. What is this you are saying, great genie? Tell me your history and how you came to be shut up in that vase. At this, the genie looked at the fisherman haughtily. Thou shalt speak to me more respectfully before I kill thee. Uh, 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 quick pause. Um, haughtily is not the same thing as haughtily. Uh, like H-O-T-T, -T, that's a whole different thing. Uh, haughtily is where you think you're all that in a bag of chips. Uh, well, where you think you're funny. super special. Like when you try to talk to that one kid in the lunchroom, they're like, uh, no. Look at you and look at this. That's not happening. Uh, that's <laughs> haughtily. So similar, but just So it's like talking enough. to you. Yeah. Uh, I try to talk down to you guys all the time. Like, this is, this is me. That's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> For I kill thee. <laughs> Alas. What? Why should you kill me? cried the fisherman. I, I just freed you. Have you not already forgotten that? No. <laughs> but that will not prevent thy death. And I'm only going to grant thee one favor. That is to choose the manner of thy death. <laughs> what have I done to you? asked the fisherman. I cannot treat thee in any 
other way, said the genie, and if thou would knowest why, listen to my story. Uh, before the story, uh, once again, yay, genie. Um, the genie does give wishes. How many wishes? One. Apparently our genie's not good at counting. Uh, so you only get the one wish, but it's a very special wish. Uh, and what kind of special wish do you get? You get to choose your own death. Uh, and here's where like, I want a bungee jump into a pile of puppies. Uh, that could be your choice. We're going to find out what our particular character chooses in a moment. Oh, and we have our archaic pronouns. Which character gets to use them? Genie. Because who has power? Genie. Does the fisherman use them? No. No, because he has no power. Because, because he is not a genie. Apparently he's about to be dead. <laughs> now, the, the genie is going to give us a little flashback where he's going to explain to us how he got put into that jar. I rebelled against the king of the genie to punish me. He shut me up in this vase of copper and he put on the leaden cover his seal, which is an enchantment powerful enough to prevent my coming out. Then he had the vase thrown into the sea. During the first period of my captivity, I vowed that if anyone should free me before a hundred years were passed, I would make him so rich, even his grandchildren would not be able to spend all his wealth. But that century passed, and no one freed me. In the second century, I vowed that I would give all the treasures of the world to my deliverer. But... He never came. In the third, I promised to make him a potent king, to be always near him, to grant him three wishes every day. But that century passed as the other two had done, and I remained in the same place. At last, I grew angry at being captive for so long, and I vowed that if anyone would release me, I would kill him at once. It would only allow him to choose in what manner he should Die! So you see, as you have freed me today, choose in what way you will die. <coughs> I told you, stressful voice. One, how did our genie get put into the vase? By the king. Hawaiian? The, the king um, was punishing... Right. The king was... The king was punished... The king of the genie... To punish him... Perfect of this. Um, yes. Words, they're tough. So essentially, he got sassy and got grounded. Yeah, that. Much like when you sash your parents, like, I'm not going to eat this. That's a pile of goo. And they're like, to your room. You're like, I don't care anyway. It's the same idea. He got grounded. But instead of being grounded to his room, he got grounded to a little jar. Uh, and how long has he been grounded in the jar? Five yeah. centuries. I think it's like 300 years. 400, no. 400 years. Math. And so 400 years he's been trapped in there. And he used to want to be nice. He's like, you let me out. I'll give you all kinds of good stuff. But nobody lets him out, so he gets grumpy. That's what happens when you guys get grounded. And so the same thing happened here. The fisherman was very unhappy. What an unlucky man I am to have freed you. I implore you, spare my life. I have told thee, it is impossible. Choose quickly. Thou art wasting time. The fisherman began to devise a scheme. You guys know what a scheme is? Yes. yes. Right. A, plan. A, plan. All right. a scheme. Oh, All right. right. Since, since I must die, before I choose the manner of my death, I ask you, on your honor, to answer me truly one question. The genie, finding himself presented with such a positive response to his command, trembled and replied, Ask what thou wilt, but make it quick. All right, I, I wish to know, if you really were in that vase this whole time, dare you swear it by the name of the great God? I do swear by that great name that I was. Huh, I really can't believe it, said the fisherman. That vase cannot even contain one of your feet. How could your whole body go in? Yeah, I, I don't think I can believe it unless I see you do this incredible thing. Is it possible that thou dost not believe me after the solemn oath I have taken? Truly not I, nor will I believe you unless you go into the vessel again. Do you see what's getting ready to happen? Yes. 
Then the genie began to change himself into smoke, which, as before, spread over the sea and the shore, and which, then collecting itself together, began to go back into the vase slowly and evenly till there was nothing left outside. Then a voice came from the vase, which said to the fisherman, <clears throat> Well, unbelieving fisherman, here I am in the vase. Do you believe me now? The fisherman, instead of answering, took the lid of lead and shut it down quickly on top of the vase. Oh, genie, now it is your turn to beg my favor. But I shall throw you into the sea from where I took you. And then I will build a house on the shore to warn fishermen who come to cast their nets here against fishing up such a wicked genie as thou art, who vows to kill the man who frees thee. At these words, the genie did all he could to get out, but he could not because of the enchantment of the lid. Then he tried to get out by cunning. Open the vessel. Give me my liberty. I promise to satisfy thee to thy own happiness is fulfilled. Thou art a traitor, replied the fisherman. I should deserve to lose my life if I were such a fool as to trust thee. If I trust myself to thee, continued the fisherman, then I am sure you will surely betray me again in the future when it suits your needs. No, you shall forever remain encased in this tomb. And there we stop. Ooh, wow. Oh, um, our archaic pronouns change. How do the archaic pronouns change? The fisherman. The fisherman. Why does the fisherman use them? Now he gets to be sassy, do a little sassy dance, like, oh, who's using the pronouns now? And he gets to sass him back because now he gets trapped in there. The fisherman is the one that's not yay. And now they're like, oh man, that genie was so stupid. I agree. Which is why we get to describe our characters. And now let's give you answers on the homework because whatever we don't get done becomes homework. And and try to make life easy. So characters, we have two. Who are the two characters? The fisherman and the genie. There you go. Fisherman, genie. Now once again, on your descriptions, it cannot be one that works for both characters. Because I had a kid earlier go like, can we call the fisherman old? I'm like, no, because that could apply to both of them. Because the genie's been around for hundreds of years, so find a thing that does not work to both. So Mika, fisherman. Poor and hungry. That would work for me. I did religious and poor, but there's any number of things that can work as long as it does not apply to both. And for our genie person, what can we use okay. to describe our genie? Reese? What? I would <laughs> to kill the fisherman. Yeah, because that would definitely not apply to both of them. I went for mean and not smart, but the one who kills the fisherman, the fisherman like can work. Hawaiian. I have the best one for the genie, okay? So, all that and a bag of chips. He does think so. Although he loses that bag of chips at the end. Oh, yes. He's no. barely a soft pretzel. No. Yes. Oh, for our setting, <laughs> for the pretzel. win. At the very beginning of it, we figure out two wins. Kind of two wins. Huh. Johnny. <gasps> Centuries ago. Works for me. I did a long time ago and early in the morning. For the where, I'm going to give you one and then see if you can figure out why I said it. Middle East. I put it down as one of my wares. Why would I put that down as one of my wares? Harvey? Because they have a king in the Middle East and we don't. That's part of it. They also have one in England and Spain. No, they have a queen in England. They used to have a king. Back to this took place, fancy pants. Once again, you should accept me being right. Roger, Roger. Okay, this is a long shot, like, far fetched. Okay. Um, so, like, I was thinking of, like, Aladdin, and is it the art? Aladdin from like the Middle East area, and that's where I got like genie. Prince Ali. Because of the whole idea of the genies and the fact that we don't, I mean, normally we don't have genies around here. I have three in my basement. Oh, uh, and so I figured that's where most likely the story would be coming from because the genies are more of a Middle East kind of area. And then after that, the other where, where does it take place? Seashore. Not to taunt the kid again. But on a beach next to the seashore kind of area. Seashore, seashore. Now for the plot. Well, one, the very beginning of it. Hopefully we can figure out that one. So at the very beginning, Uber, what, how does our story begin? And how many times does he go fishing? 
I put all of that together. Fishermen will only toss his net four times. So I put that as our beginning stuff. And then to go to the very end, Cooper, what's the very end of our story? How does it wrap up? Uh, he captures the genie. We're trained. Fishman tricks genie back into canister. Excuse me. Now the trick is, we only have three more lines to cover the whole rest of the story. <laughs> it becomes like, what are the important things we have to have in there? So we know Fishman will only toss net four times. Um, so what's going to have to eventually happen at some point in there? Jackson? Genie explains himself in the middle. I can see that. Lion? Uh, he finds uh, the genie hops out of the land. I can see that too. Roger, Roger. For number two, he finds the container. Would work. And what's inside the container? The genie. I'd probably agree with that too. Let's see what I put for number three. So the three, so I put, listen, the genie popping out of the container is number two. What's number three going to be then? The genie tells a story. Oh. Might as well know that, once again, yours can be different. That's fine. <laughs> the joy of opinions. So I put Fishman only tossed net four times. Fishman discovers genie in canister. Then number two is going to have to be. The bell. Continued. I guess we'll never know. Now you get to figure it out on your own. It becomes homework. Uh, why would you do that? Because I told you ahead of time. It wasn't a surprise. Uh. I didn't pull like a rabbit out of a hat. I told you at the very you beginning there was a rabbit. Be 